Hi guys, how you doing? Well, I'm doing okay. I uh, just want to talk about the uh, most recent development in the news and mainly Trump's rally. Now, um, I have said this before and I will re-emphasize this again. That <coughs> wasn't that, okay? that there was nothing wrong in Trump saying if you hate America so much just leave why be somewhere where you you are not you hate you don't like it there like I left New York because I hated New York and so I left <coughs> there's nothing shameful about it nothing racist about it there's nothing controversy about it if you don't like where you live then you move you leave now, they were doing a lot of America bashing, bashing on America. So Trump basically said, if you go, if you hate it here, you don't like it to be here, then just leave. Now, that's where he should have stopped, but he didn't. He went just a little bit further with the phrase to go back where you came from, or something close to that. Now. That really was uncalled for. He could have simply ended it. He could have simply ended it when he said, "You don't like it here, Lee." And not only was that bad, but it was equally bad for the crowd at his rally to shout, "Send her back now!" Uh, crowd chants are very difficult to articulate it, it's hard on the ear okay now the crowd was wrong when they shouted and sent her back that was that was wrong okay now when I first heard it it was very hard to make out so at first I thought they were shouting center s e no, I'm sorry c e n t e r center like this is the end that's the beginning and this here is the center or uh, we're at the center for education or something like that or the Wiesendorf center okay or the Metropolitan Center you know center just um, and back sound like bag to me or bad because um, the K sound okay with the Hillary chant lock her up okay that was easy on the ear that was easy to understand because the K, the K sound was right in the middle of the chant which then caused it to stop right there on that K sound on that K sound so, um, lock, lock, lock. It's a hard letter. It's a hard sound. Lock her up. Okay. So with lock, you stop and then you have to start back up again with her up. Okay. That's a little easier on the ear. But a chin of center back, um, I didn't understand what they were chanting. I thought they were shouting center. Like, this is the, um, this is the left, this is the right, and this here is the center. Oh, the center of the controversy. He's in the center of things. And be careful of being in the center of the storm. You know, so, because the, uh, the, 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 the Send, send, okay. It's a soft sound. It's a send. And when you chant it or we usually talk, it would come out sometimes as center. Uh, or even senator, okay. Because that's a three syllable word senator. Did you write your senator today to fix the problem? Uh, good evening, senator. May I, you know. 
But sometimes, if you say fast, if you say quickly, Senator almost sounds like Senator. Senator. Senator, Senator. It, it's, and especially you have a lot of people saying it. Senator, Senator, Senator. And back, okay, the sound of the end is hard to hear when it's the end of the sentence. Because the, when you run, when you come to a period in the sentence, your voice angles down. So the letter at the end is not that distinctive. So the k sound at the end of set her back, set her back, set her back, set her back. Are you talking about a set her back? Or maybe you're saying that, so, that the center is bad because at the end of that sentence on the ear, it sounds like back. Bad. Bad. So it's hard on the ear to make out the k sound at the end. So with a chant, set her back, 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 set her bad. Is the center bad? I thought it was a pretty good center. Uh, center bag. Would you like a center bag? You know, to put your groceries in. Yes, we have a nice center bag. We have center bags for sale. So, the chant itself. Okay, it was wrong. They should not have said that. Now that I know what they said. Because I watched it, I couldn't make out what they were shouting. And it wasn't until the next day that um, everybody's talking about the rally and how things are now worse <coughs> because of the awful thing the crowd shouted. I said, what did they shout? I they shouted, send her back. Or send her back. Or send her back. Oh, hello. My name is send her back. What's yours? Oh, good evening, Senator. You know, this is Senator Back. Senator Back, nice to meet you, sir. Good day, Senator Back. You know, so it's hard on the ear to make that out. So that's basically what I want to talk about. That while the ch well, now that I know what they were chanting, um, they should not have done that. They should not have done that. They should not have shouted that. But it goes to show what I've said many, many times. Of a wise person who said to me, is the only people you can control is yourself. Because you've got free will. And they've got free will. And if they want to support you, you can't control you can't you have you can't control what people who people support. I, I'll support a dolphin, and you can't make me support anything else. You can't control other people. Hey, I'll support a toucan. Toucan? Yeah. I thought three can. Well, three could, but I think two can. Okay, I'd like a pair of pairs, please. Language is very funny. And uh, and what they're talking about, I'm not using the word man and manhole cover. Use maintenance cover. What maintenance? <coughs> Actually, it's a sewer cover. But they call it a manhole, I guess, because man usually work down in that hole. Okay. And it's been called a manhole for years. So you... The people on the left are trying to force all of us to change our language, to change the words we use, because somebody might, somebody might, that's a key word there, somebody might be offended by it. Now, what I think is going on, especially on the left, 
is they're a do-nothing group. The Democrats in Congress, the Liberals in Congress do nothing, and they call them the do-nothing Congress. That is true. They, this, this Congress has been, you know, there for since January, and they haven't done a darn thing, and here it is almost August. So we know that they are a do-nothing Congress. They've done nothing to improve. And see, that's, that's another thing. They complain about conditions at the, se at the detention center. Center. Oh, okay, there's a detention center. Are you sure that this, the detention is not in the center of things? Okay. Okay, it's a detention center, right? And they saw conditions there. She has no clue that she is a lawmaker. You can make laws to correct problems. But see, those on the left are, I, be I believe they are injustice collectors. The term was used um, on Lost in Space when it referred to Dr. Smith. And Maureen, she said, some of them are pretty nice when they're not collecting. And so everybody on the left is, a, is an injustice collector. That's what they are. They collect injustices. And uh, that's their role. That's their function. So the lawmakers in Congress who make laws to improve situations chose not to do their job of making laws. They would rather complain and complain and bitch and kvetch, you know, and hope that somebody will hear the complaint and do something about it. And that's another thing. What, who, who is... Who is her audience? When she was talking about how terrible about AOC. Who was she talking to? Yeah, she was talking to the camera and everything, but somebody had to be her true audience. Because now you're my audience. I'm talking to you. So you are my audience. <coughs> when AOC was complaining about how awful things were down there, and she was complaining. Who was she complaining to? Who would fix the problem? The reporters? You think the reporters would be the ones to change the rules and improve conditions? The camera? America? Their constituents? Are they the ones who will make the changes? They can only make the changes if they make change the laws. Because they're follow they're only following laws that are already in the books. And that's what Congress does. The Congress discusses or brings up it's like um, you know, being a student council or a resident council. Okay. You go to the resident council just like the senator like the everybody in Congress. They would get together, they think of a solution. And see, that's the problem with the liberals and the Democrats and everybody on the left. They have been programmed not to think. Somebody else will do the thinking for you. Someone else will change things. So she is complaining, hopefully, to the person who will change things. But she is the one that can do that. But she doesn't want to do that. None of them do. And they talk about, oh, you know, this is not the country we are. This is not the country we are. 
Okay, then what is the country we are? And how about some ideas on getting there? Right? But they don't have any ideas. Because they've been trained not to think using the brain that God gave them. Because they say, okay, conditions are bad. How can we fix that? But see, they don't think that because they need something to complain about. They need some injustice. Because they're happy when they're complaining about something. And if there's nothing to complain about, they're restless. They're miserable. They're like ants in the pants. I mean, it's just, they need something to complain about. Like the word manhole. That's when 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 news is a slow day, and they're not doing anything, and they say, "Hmm, I need something to complain about." Let's complain about the word manhole. You know, because it's not inclusive enough. You, I mean, what are you going to do? Single-handedly, just complete the transform the the English language. Poor Noah Webster and 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 Roger, they are spinning in their graves, knowing that you know there are people who just want to change the language. Ladies and gentlemen, not wrong with that. Men and women, boys and girls, nah, -uh. people, students, you know. <laughs> Parents, you know, your parent A, your parent B, because we don't want to know your gender. So we got to complain about something or else we will be restless, we'll go crazy. And as soon as there's something to complain about, they get all excited. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. There's something to complain about. And I'm going to complain about this. And that's the payoff. They just they, they get excited and they find what to complain about. <coughs> Whether it's something of the far, far distant past. I mean, just recently, um, it, it, uh, today or whatever is the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing, right? And what are they complaining? they complaining about that the astronauts consisted of white men. So, why is that important? Who cares? Who cares what, what race they are and who cares what gender they are? That's not what's important. What's important is that they landed on the moon. And that whole business about gender, they, they, they solved that some years later with Sally Ride or Christine McCullough, you know. It, 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 everything's constantly changing, and it's changing for the better. And you can't lock yourself up at a moment in time before those changes went into effect and say, oh, the moon landing was racist, and the moon landing was, you know, well, that's a terrible thing because it was not inclusive. You have three people there. You can only have three people. And how many people, how many categories, this is, you guys are separating, or we're not separating or dividing the country, you people are, because with your identity politics, gender, race, sexual orientation, and you fit in this group, you fit in this group, you fit in this group. I, I told you, I, I'm a long-time sociology student. I mean, it, it's clear that we don't care what race you are. We don't care what gender you are. We don't care what nationality you are. It's unimportant. It's irrelevant. The content of your character is important. How you treat others is important. 
the things you do, your behavior is important. <coughs> like I told you about that kid who walked up to me and said, you're big. My appearance, right? He could have said, you're white. <laughs> and you're not. So, what's your point? So when he said, you're big, I said, yeah, you're little. What's your point? You know, because it's all unimportant. It's all unimportant. And that's really all they have to hang on. Because they've been taught not to think. Not to work. Not to do anything. That you will be taken care of. You will be spoiled. And someone will take care of you. Eat, you know, for example, the government. <clears throat> you elect us and we will take care of you. You won't have to work. You won't have to earn for a living. You can do whatever you want and not have to contribute to society. You have the freedom to do whatever you want to do. If you want to smoke your pot, you can do it. If you want to play a video game, you can do it. If you want to spend your days at the mall, you could do it instead of working and we will give you a guaranteed salary just for doing nothing <laughs> it's just you know and the thing is is that oh how, who's gonna pay for it all the rich are going to pay for it, and we're going to tax them. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, um, that's pretty much what I want to talk about. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really telling, you know, that they would just rather complain they're at a place where they can do something that will make them happy because when you're complaining about something you're not happy about something so you want to do whatever you can do so that you'll be happy if you're in a position to do it if you're in a dish if you are in a position to do something that will not make you upset unless you're a masochist and you enjoy making yourself upset, or you, rather you enjoy being upset. And you know, there are people like that. There, there are people who are turned on to pain. And, and I'm using sexual overtones here, uh, because it's sort of metaphoric, you know, because there's a payoff. The pleasure you get from being upset, uh, it's no different than um, to, I, I think I've heard some years ago that for some people, a sexual turn on and to almost reach orgasm occurs when you're being, your, your breath is being, you're being choked or suffocated and you reach that point of almost passing out because you're being soaked or suffocated and for these people it's a turn on so when they're just on the brink of flatlining they reach an orgasm it's, it's a sexual turn on now it's sick for me I think it's you know but it ain't sick for them and see, this is why in the Jewish tradition it's not do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Because I asked somebody who was very abusive and whatever, and I asked them, how would you feel if somebody treated you the way you've been treating that person? And he thought about it and he thought about it and finally he said, I wouldn't care. That's why he does it. He don't care. 
you don't care how the other person how the other person would like it because he wouldn't care if it was done to him so that's why in the Jewish tradition it's whatever is hateful unto you do not do to somebody else this way you have to think what is hateful to you I would ask this to the squad or to the Democrats or anybody who are really interesting interested in doing absolutely nothing at all how would you what's hateful unto you what well, how would you hate being treated they'd have to really think about that because they don't think along those lines that they're selfish and greedy and it's like self-gratification, man, want, 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 now. But, um, so, always remember, it's not do unto others as you'd have them do it to you. Because there are people who wouldn't care if they were treated the way they were treated others. No, they have to think about, hmm, what is hateful unto me? What would I hate to happen to me? They really have to think about that. Because I'll bet none of them even think about that. Because they're selfish in their own little world. In their own little bubble of anti-reality. <laughs> That's a term, huh? I just thought that just now. You know, so, but, so to sum up, Trump, President Trump went a little too far when he said that she should go back to where she came from. That I object to. But I support him a thousand percent in if you don't like where you're living, if you don't like the place you're at, move, leave. Just like I left New York. Just like I left New York. Because I hated it there. So I left. You know. I could move to Israel, like a friend of mine did. He wanted to live there, that he wasn't happy here. Or maybe he wasn't happy here, I don't know. But there are people who move, who leave this country, and establish residence in another country, for various different reasons. So, to say to people, if you hate our country, if you hate our flag, if you hate being here so much, then then leave. There was a guy. I'll make this quick. I was um, leaving comments, and I said something about that to somebody. If you don't like it, leave. And this guy comes to me and says, "No, you leave. You leave. You go. You leave. Nobody wants you. You mean?" you don't want me not nobody wants me so it's like oh yeah who did you talk to did you talk to my friends did you talk to my family did you talk to anybody I know anybody I've been in contact with did you ask them if they want me around so how do you know nobody wants me here I said you leave if you're unhappy here I'm happy here. I'm not leaving. Guess why? Because I'm happy here. But you sound like you're not happy. So unless you're a masochist, why stay where you're unhappy? Just leave. Go. Go to real the country. There are dozens to choose from. Go to England. Go to France. Portugal. Spain. Italy. You know. Germany, go anywhere, anywhere you want to go, pick a country where you know you'll be happy. I'm happy here, so you can't tell me to leave, just because I'm telling you to leave. You know, that's ridiculous. I said, I'm not leaving, I have no intention to leave because I like it here. But you sound like you don't like it here, so that's what I'm saying. Leave and find a place you're happy. No, you leave. Why should I? I like it here. Nobody wants you. Who says? You. You and uh, you yourself and you. 
three people, me, myself, and I. That's who says nobody. That's who says not. We don't want you. Did you contact my family? Did you ask them? Did you ask my friends? If they want me around? So it's a stupid argument. You leave. You're telling me to leave? No, you leave. Nobody wants you. I think you mean you don't want me around. Because you hate America. You hate everything. So why are you here if you're unhappy here? That's what makes no sense. Anyway, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Um, so once again, to sum up, the chant for me and my ear was undecipherable. I had no idea what they were chanting. But what they were chanting was not right. And I disagree with them, just like Trump said. I agree with Trump on this. He didn't like it. I agree. I didn't like that either. You know, it was wrong. Yes, it was wrong. And but I agree with President Trump saying, if you hate America so much, if you hate our flag, you just absolutely think this is a terrible country, then why are you still here? Like so many celebrities threatened to go to Canada if, if Donald Trump was put in office. And guess what? They're still here. And you know why, don't you? Because Canada doesn't want them. So they have no place to go. They're stuck. They're stuck where they're unhappy. But it doesn't have to be Canada. It could be Australia. Half of their country screwed up too. Because they copy us. And they see some of us acting stupid. So they're acting stupid. They see some people adopting crazy ideas. So they're adopting crazy ideas. They're like mimicking us because they put us in high regard so hey you'll be happy over there because they some of them think like you do so why don't you move to Australia doesn't have to be where you came from that was wrong what he said so basically he was right in saying if you don't like it here leave Move to Australia, move to England, move to any country in the world you want to, where you will be happy. Because that makes more sense than staying somewhere where you're unhappy, just like I left New York. But I wasn't happy there. So, on that note, that will end the video. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and, um, if you like what you hear, uh, I'll see you, uh, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you later. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye.